What's up, everybody? Welcome back into the Letterman Lounge for another edition of the Letterman Lounge with Matt Parker on the other side of that screen. I am Spencer Holbrook, and we are going to talk about a lot of things that have happened in the last 24 hours on the recruiting trail for Ohio State, on the recruiting trail for the rest of college football. You know it by now. Nick Saban has officially retired as head coach of the Alabama Crimson Tide after six national championships, two, 200 some victories, getting every coach in America basically fired for not being Nick Saban um, and out recruiting everyone and their brother around college football for the last 10 years, 15 years. Now he is gone. Um, not gone, like gone, gone, but gone from the recruiting scene, gone from college football, Alabama looking for a new head coach. And that means big things for all of college football, particularly in the SEC, but also around college football in the Big Ten for Ohio State, one of the marquee brands now. Matt, how you doing, man? It's There's a lot to uh, get into here. I feel like the last 24, 48 hours between recruiting stuff, between uh, NFL decisions for Ohio State guys, or rather the lack thereof of NFL decisions, because it just seems like the entire roster is coming back for the 2024 season. Uh, it, there's like been, it almost feels like there's been too much that has happened. So we have to find a way to make it small, which is what we're going to do this afternoon for the better part of, I don't know, maybe an hour. We'll see how long it goes. I don't know. We're going to go where where the wind takes us. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, there's a lot going on, man. It's kind of crazy, isn't it? It is crazy. Um, this obviously sends shockwaves everywhere. You know, you've got Oregon's head coach being rumored to be on planes. Um, he stayed in Eugene and he's staying at Oregon. You've got rumors of different Big Ten coaches now being looked at to go to Alabama, which would obviously have huge implications for the future of the Big Ten in the new 18-team league. You've got SEC coaches being rumored to go to Alabama. All of this has an immediate recruiting impact. Uh, Alabama just signed one of the top recruiting classes in all of college football. I think it was it finished number two ahead of Ohio State, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you know, those guys all have decisions to make. They they commit to play for Alabama, but they also really commit to play for Nick Saban. And now, you know, everyone on that roster signed up to play for Nick Saban, and now he's gone. So I don't know. Let, let's look at the, I guess, the macro first. Like the big, big picture. Like, what what do you think that this means for recruiting? I have my own thoughts that I'll get into when after I give you the floor here. But what do you think this means? I mean, you remove, not arguably, you remove the greatest college football coach of all time from the recruiting landscape. And that has to open things up for not just Ohio State, but, I mean, for everybody. Like, Ohio State, or not Ohio State, Alabama was, like, one of, one of one programs that could go into Georgia and take kids and have them go to Alabama pretty consistently. Like a, a, a name that a lot of folks are going to want us to talk about is Caleb Downs. And I'm sure that we will go in depth about Caleb Downs, but that's a guy that probably realistically should have gone to Georgia, played at Mill Creek high school um, and went to Alabama because of Nick Saban. Like, that's the reality of the situation. Um, and now that that guy is gone from, from the college football landscape, that just opens up so many avenues, potential avenues, I should say, because well, first off, whoever Alabama decides to hire to be the next head coach of the Crimson Tide, no one's ever going to replace Nick Saban. So, like, I, I would like that that potential headline of, you know, such and such replaces Nick Saban. No, he's just the guy that has to follow him. Like no one's going to replace Nick Saban in the same way that no one replaced Bear Bryant at uh, Alabama, you know, uh, to make it about Ohio state though, uh, which is, you know, kind of the point of, uh, of this conversation. And uh, I also just for future for the, for the future, I also do want to get into the two recent commitments that Ohio State just got uh, with Devin Sanchez and Zahir Mathis, but we can do that later on. Um, it sure makes going into the South a little bit easier for Ryan Day and his staff, doesn't it? Like, you have to think it does. Yeah, you, you the A is still on the chest. The national championships are still in the trophy case. Yeah. Uh, Saban's probably still going to have a, an impact and an imprint on that thing for a while. 
And I'm going to say right off the top, I'm not speculating on guys who could go into the portal. Um, uh -oh. I think it's unfair to the players right now. So I know that people are going to be asking about different players from Alabama who could go in the portal. There's a time and a place for that. Right now is not the time. I'm not going to speculate on different guys. I know everybody wants to talk about Caleb Downs and Caden Proctor and, and Justice Haynes and, like, guys who Ohio State recruited hard, Richard Young. like Olaf Lennon. Olaf, like, there are yeah. – Ty Lockwood, former Ohio State commit. Like, yeah. there are so many guys on that roster that will be wanted by everybody. Until they go in the transfer portal, and I don't think that a lot of them actually will. Like, I, I can't sit here and speculate. But, like, here's the deal, Matt. Like, the A is still going to be on the chest everywhere they walk into. And the, the brand, until it's tarnished, is going to have a lot of staying power. But, like, do you remember – a lot of Ohio State fans listening to this right now remember when Urban Meyer left. And it's like, okay, well, the Blocko is still there, but does Ryan Day carry the same weight? We know that he doesn't necessarily carry the same weight because he doesn't have the championship rings that Urban Meyer has. But, like, the, the Blocko still gets him in a lot of buildings, you know, whether that's Langston Hughes or Buford or, you know – what used to be, uh, you know, Hoover at Alabama and, and, you know, North shore in Texas and, and uh, Quinn Ewers is high school, South Lake Carroll, you know, like the block O gets you anywhere you want to be that, that a, that script a gets you anywhere you want to be. But like Ryan day has a little bit of an easier time walking into a, a high school uh, and telling the secretary, he's there to see a five-star kid when he's following Sark instead of when he's following Saban. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's yeah. just a little bit easier to talk to these guys when you're not following the guy who's got more championship rings than he can put up on one hand. Which is I – and mean, that's the reality of the situation, right? Like, you you mentioned the power of the brand, which is true for a lot of places. Like, I think, I think Georgia is in a different spot because they've won two national championships with Kirby Smart. Uh, Ohio State, when Urban was there, was in a different spot because they won national championships. If you look at the time before, if you look at Alabama before Nick Saban got there and made it what it is now, I, I, I don't think Alabama is on the same page uh, as, as an Ohio State or someone else in, in the national landscape. But Nick Saban brought that brand back to life. So whoever is going to follow Nick Saban and and wear that you know that script A, um, on their chest, they they got big shoes to fill, and I, I don't envy who whoever has to do that. Uh, you mentioned not speculating about potential Crimson Tide players going into the portal, and I agree that's the right thing to do. But what we can do, and I think what we should do. And as a matter of fact, I've already done this because I wrote about this last night for LettermanRoad.com is look at the Crimson Tides 2025 class, which has seven commits. It's number three or four in the country right now in the early uh, on three team industry rankings. Um, LSU is number one. Ohio State is number two. Um, and we look at this Alabama 2025 class and there are three guys in that class that like make complete sense to switch their commitments to Ohio State. Uh, and the first one I want to start off with is Jamie French, uh, borderline five-star wide receiver from Jacksonville, Florida, plays at Mandarin High School. Um, I believe he's a, a member of the South Florida Express seven-on-seven -seven team, which if you don't know by now, uh, is essentially a pipeline for, for Ohio State. Uh, this is a guy who is going to be Switching spots for the number one wide receiver in the country in the 2025 cycle. DeCorian Moore is one of those guys who's – he's committed to LSU, though. Um, Jamie French committed to Alabama in July of 2023. I believe it was July 22nd or 23rd, somewhere in there. Uh, six foot one, like a buck 75, buck 80, somewhere in there. And uh, Ohio State has not stopped recruiting him. Uh, ever since he committed to Alabama. And, and now, Spence, you got to think that, that that effort by Brian Hartline and Ryan Day and whoever the new offensive coordinator for the Buckeyes is going to be whenever that gets announced, you have to imagine that that, that press is, is going to uh, increase. Like that's, you, you got to imagine that press is now going to go from 10 to whatever is, is past 10 on a scale of 1 to 10. 
Yeah, I would think so because, you know, Brian Hartline does his thing. Ohio State's going to do its thing. Um, the 2025 pursuit for guys is already on. And, you know, the Buckeyes aren't going to shy away from a challenge. They especially aren't going to shy away from a challenge post Saban. Like, I, I think you should see Ohio State be a little more aggressive going against Alabama head to head, um, you know, because there's almost a little bit of a negative recruiting that you can do now. You know, all oh, the, the new guys still unproven. Are, are fans going to love the new guy as much as they love Nick? You know, uh, it's not going to be the same as it was. Like, there's a way to recruit against Alabama that there wasn't before, especially with guys who are committed there. Like, hey, remember when you committed to Nick Saban, the greatest coach of all time? Yeah, he's not there anymore. Like, come be a part of, you know, what we're trying to build. We're trying to be the next Alabama, and we have this continuity that they now don't have. Like, for the first time in a long time, you can hear that from from folks, right? Like, and if, there's, if there's one position that Ohio State recruits better than anyone in the country, it's going to be wide receiver. Right. They're already like, out recruiting Alabama with Nick Saban uh, at wide receiver. Yeah, like exactly. So, I mean, Ohio State just brought in 10 stars, uh, had a deep, had a flip on signing day of a wide receiver and still probably signed the best wide receiver class in, in the 2024 cycle with Jeremiah Smith and Mylon Graham, uh, two five star wide receivers. So I think now now that, you know, Nick Saban has has retired and everything like that. Uh, the, the the press for Jamie French definitely increases. I mean, this is a guy who he visited Ohio State this past fall. He was on campus for uh, the Penn State game at the end of October. And now, granted, that was a big uh, South Florida Express visit. Uh, a lot of guys from that seven on seven team were there, including Jeremiah Smith, who I mean, yeah, he was he was committed at the time and now is an Ohio State Buckeye. So. But anytime, I mean, we said this how many times in the fall, anytime you got Jeremiah Smith on campus, that was a good thing. Um, I don't know. I, I'm really intrigued. I think a lot of this, though, depends on who the hire is going to be, right? Now that Dan Lanning has made it official that he's staying in Oregon, which, in my opinion, is good for the Big Ten because you want your conference to be competitive. So that October 12th matchup in Eugene – Certainly remains as interesting as ever now that Dan Lanning has has officially, you know, dispelled all of the speculation and rumors about him, you know, taking uh, an F-16 to Tuscaloosa last night. Uh, but now now let's move on to to the other guy, one of the other guys that I wrote about last night, and that is four star edge rusher uh, Javian Hilson, who plays at. Coco High School, which is a place that Ohio State knows very well. Uh, it has Cedric Hawkins, who played uh, at Coco High School in the Orlando area in Florida. Uh, that's 2023 safety, Cedric Hawkins. And then in the 2025 class, Javen Boggs, who wide receiver, uh, currently plays for Coco High School. He's going into his senior season. And, and by all counts, I mean, Javon Boggs won won a bunch of awards uh, this past fall as the Tigers' leading wide receiver. Very impressive, polished wide receiver. And now Ohio State, the 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 Javion Hilson commitment was very interesting to me because he committed like out of nowhere um, on December eighth, twenty twenty three, and that happened like two days after he got the Alabama offer and was going through last night and just reading some quotes from the Bama online guys, Alabama, the on three Alabama site. Um, this they do a great job. They yeah, do a great job. They do they a really great job. Uh, Joseph Hastings is the guy to follow for Alabama recruiting and Andrew Bone, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, um, JV and Hilson committed to Alabama straight up because of Nick Saban. Like there is a quote, and I'm going to butcher it. It's not word for word, but the quote is basically like Nick Saban called me told me he needed me here, and I committed right there. Mm -hmm. Well, now Nick Saban is gone. So that's right. What, what happens now? What happens now? You know, um, I spoke with Hilson in September when Ohio State offered him, and he, he said that was a recruitment defining moment for him. Um, and that he did not expect to earn the Ohio State offer because at the time he only had offers from uh, like UCF, Penn State, 
Uh, I think Florida State was in there already. Florida, a lot of the Florida programs were already in there. And, and even with the struggles on the recruiting trail that Ohio State has had at defensive end, uh, anytime the Buckeyes offer an edge rusher, like these kids know what that means. Like they know what it means. And I mean, Hilson said that, that he was pretty close to tears when Larry Johnson offered him to, you know, go to Ohio State. So now you have to think, okay, a, a, a teenager made an emotional decision. That happens. You were once a teenager. I was once a teenager. The people at home watching this or at work or wherever they are were teenagers. Maybe some are teenagers and make emotional decisions. My point here is I expect that recruitment to open up. I genuinely do. Um, I have not yet spoken with Hilson. Uh, I certainly intend on it. This way, if my fault's going to be in my mouth, at least I know I put it there. Uh, so... I think that's a guy, especially with Zaheer Mathis, who just committed to Ohio State on Wednesday. I think J.B. and Hilton is a guy. Ohio State needs to load up at edge rushers. They do. There, there's no hiding about that whatsoever. Um, that five or six that we've talked about in the 2024 cycle, now it has to be five or six in 2025. There is there, That's certainly the case. Uh, and a guy like JV and Hilson, who committed to Alabama straight up because of Nick Saban, that's a guy that Ohio State can certainly work on and would be wise to do so. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, the Buckeyes need edge rushers. The Buckeyes are uh, going through a coaching change. Not a coaching change, but some coaching shakeups. When it yeah. comes to defensive staff, obviously new safeties coach McIrary coming in. Uh, we had that at LettermanRoad.com yesterday. Um, you know, could another defensive line coach be on the way? There, there have been, there's been plenty of talk about that, um, and we'll continue to cover that LettermanRoad.com. Like if that happens, then you know the Buckeyes could go even more on like a full court press. Um, and you know that that's a position where you have to be aggressive in 2025. Also, I was not a teenager not so long ago. I was a teenager seven, almost eight years ago at this point. I'm a little older than people probably think I am, uh, which is fine. I'll just take a little exception to that. Sure, uh, hero. Yeah, there that we go. Username? Yeah, thanks for watching, Hummus Hero. I, I, there was hummus at the Cotton Bowl in the media lounge, and it was really good, by the way. Okay. Hummus so, in Texas? It was good. It was good. They had a whole like Mediterranean spread. Pita and hummus, it was good. But uh, In Texas? That's crazy. Yeah, it was good. Um, what else is good is you know, we're going to keep talking about what, what this saving thing means for Ohio State. Um, you know, the Buckeyes have tried to get into Alabama, Georgia territory a lot. Um, I think recruiting against Kirby Smart is becoming more difficult with the departure of Nick Saban, to be honest with you. Like, I think it becomes even tougher to recruit the South against Georgia, but against Alabama, it becomes better. Um, because what Saban was doing in 15, 16, 17, where he was, if, if you got a Saban offer and you were from the South, you were going to Alabama. Right. Um, Unless your I, name is Juan Bell. Shout out, yeah. No, uh, you, could, Sean Bell, yeah. you could potentially see that when it comes to, uh, you know, Kirby, and, and I completely understand that. But I, I think Ohio State and the position that it's in clearly right now with its NIL operation – is well positioned to benefit directly from the guys who are currently committed to Alabama, but then look deeper into that at the guys who are not committed to Alabama. And like you, the Buckeyes really need to take this as a chance, like for prime example, like we saw it on, uh, on Twitter yesterday or X or whatever the blank you want to call it. Sure. Naeem, Naeem offered, the number one corner in the country who could also play safety, who could also just do whatever he wanted, just get him on campus. Um, he's from Birmingham, Alabama, and he likes the Buckeyes. I'm just telling you, he likes Ohio State. And a new coach in Alabama is going to have to compete against Hugh Freeze and his NIL operation. He's going to have to compete against Kirby Smart and his operation. He's going to have to compete against Lane Kiffin, who thinks that he's going to try to do something here. Maybe he'll even be wearing that script day soon. And he's going to have to compete now against Ohio State. And, and like, happens, really quickly, by the way, if if the Alabama brass decides to appoint 
Lane Kiffin. That's an offensive mind in Tuscaloosa, which that has not existed running the show in the last 17 years. So all of those defensive guys, which that's what, like, I mean, the South produces football players, no doubt about it, no matter what side of the ball it is, but especially on the defensive side, that's, that's what they do best in my opinion. And you have an offensive minded guy leading Alabama. I think that makes things just a little bit easier for, for other programs, Ohio State included, who is an offensive centric program. I would say, I think that's the right way. Well, like, but but it, I don't even know if it's as much like that zeroed in as it's just like look at the top two guys in the state of Alabama. Ohio State loves Naeem Offord, right? Yeah. A- Alabama does too. But guess what? The guy who is the reason kids go to Alabama is no longer there. Do you know who else Ohio State really likes that is was basically a lock to go to Alabama once he decommitted from Georgia? The number two player in the state of Alabama who has a deep, deep Ohio ties. Micah DuBose, an inside offensive lineman. Do you know what you need to compete at the highest level of college football? The best offensive lineman in the country. That's a guy with Ohio ties from the state of Alabama who loved what Nick Saban was feeding him. And now that coach is not there. So, like, I'm not saying that, like, this means Ohio State's going to go sign the number one class in the country. That is not at all. I think George has got that thing on lock for a while now. But, like, yeah, Ohio State's never going to sign the number one class in the country. So but what I will say, humble opinion. but what I will say is like, just look at the very top of the top of the board. Yeah. The top two players in the state of Alabama, both have Ohio state very high on their list along with Alabama. And now Alabama becomes a peg down by default because the greatest coach of all time just, just retired. So like this, to think that this is just like pro Kirby smart pro Lane Kiffin pro even like a Billy Napier can kind of take this and 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 leap forward Brian Kelly like this has direct impacts on the Ohio State 2025 recruiting class not just with guys who are committed to Bama right man yeah I mean and that's because Ohio State recruits nationally you have to like you have to recruit nationally if you want to be a national title contender and you mentioned uh Naheem Offord who Ohio State cornerback coach Tim Walton was in Alabama during the December contact period. Um, look at what Tim Walton's doing on the trail right now. I mean, ever since he's got, ever since he got to Ohio State, all he's done is is be successful on the trail. Uh, and we've talked about that at nauseum, I feel. But now uh, he's he's doing it again in 2025. He he got a very solid cornerback addition in October to start things off with Blake Woodby, the four-star cornerback from Baltimore, Maryland, plays at St. Francis Academy, which is is a great national program. Uh, And then over the weekend, five-star cornerback Devin Sanchez commits to Ohio State when he's in the same threshold as Alabama. Alabama was a finalist for his pledge. He's in that Texas A&M LSU sweet spot area, uh, which which Houston is the hotbed for those two programs. And Tim Walton goes there and he goes and gets him. And now uh, Naheem Offord, who is from Birmingham, Alabama, I want to say, uh, Tim Walton has an opportunity to make a splash right there. Um, These are good problems for Ohio State to have, I would say. Um, And it's very refreshing to see Ohio State being able to go out uh, on the defensive recruiting trail and and really do these kinds of things. Um, And it it hasn't been like that consistently since Urban Meyer was there. I mean, Mm -hmm. to to be quite honest with you, it hasn't consistently been like that for Ohio State since Urban was there and the beginning of the Urban uh, era, quite honestly. Um, But now you I think one thing that you are seeing that that Urban did that Ryan Day is is doing this in the 2025 cycle, and and Nick retiring certainly helps that. Yeah, I think there's a new fo- a newfound focus or a refocus on the defensive side of the ball, which is why we're talking about JV and Hilson and uh, and Hamon, Hamon, all these guys far yeah. more far more right now than we're talking about the possibilities of you know Jamie French or you know. Uh, even like a Mike Dubose, like I just said, like like you are seeing I was, Ohio State. I was getting to him. I was yeah. Getting to him. Yeah. Uh, like you are seeing Ohio State really prioritize that defensive side of the ball right now and understand, like, okay, like maybe we did go a little too far in the offensive side. Like, let's get back to 
let's get back to doing some business here. And, and it looks like, you know, with Nick retiring, it could be even more highlighted down in the South with the Buckeyes. And you pair up, uh, I'll get to Micah DeBose in a second here. You, you pair up Ohio State investing in its defense. Um, and it finally, for what feels like the first time in the Ryan Day era, consistently can say, look at what the Ohio State defense does. Two years under Jim Knowles, look at the turnaround this defense has made. Uh, I think there's a legitimate case to say Ohio State secondary calls itself BIA. I think there's a legitimate case for that to be made, especially with all of the guys that are coming back. I mean, that entire secondary is coming back for 2024, which is massive. Uh, and you can actually sit down and show kids when they come visit, you can say, this is exactly, if you come to school here, this is exactly what you will do like this player does, who's wearing our jersey and playing in Ohio Stadium. That matters. Like, that matters to kids. Uh, and, and, you know, in this era of NIL stuff and everything like that, like, yeah, that that stuff matters. Like, it does. I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. NIL matters. And, you know, what what a player can can get once they get to school matters and stuff like that. And as it should. I mean, these these kids – these kids provide us, and I guess they're not kids, but you know what I'm saying here. These athletes provide us the entertainment and give us careers. So, like, yeah, they should make money off of that. But looking past that, you still have to play the game. You still have to like the system in which you're playing in, you know, like that has to happen. And Ohio State can finally show these kids when they come to Columbus and sit in the meeting rooms, you know, with Jim Knowles and – uh, Larry Johnson and Tim Walton and James Laurinaitis and soon enough, Matt Guerrero. Uh, this is what you're going to do. This is what you're going to do when you get here and you're going to do it well, like these guys did. So that's why we can talk about, you know, these JB and Hilsons and Naheem Offords and uh, all these other guys uh, to pivot to the thing offensively that Alabama does really well is offensive line play. Alabama has won, what, six national titles with Nick Saban. And I bet you all of those offensive lines were either the best in the country or pretty darn near close to it. Uh, especially probably four of those national titles. Uh, Alabama had probably the best running back in the country. You know, however, I mean, Mark Ingram won a Heisman, I believe. Is, is that right? I think. I don't know. There's so many great Alabama running backs. It's hard to keep up with. We should have Tim May on here. He knows all about it. Uh, you have to have great running backs happen because of great offensive line play more often than not. Um, and and that w that's continuing in 2025. Alabama has, as of now, uh, four-star interior offensive lineman Dontro Glover, who Plays at Langston Hughes, which is a school that Ohio State knows very well with Jelani Thurman and now Aaron Nolan, both in Columbus, both played at Langston Hughes outside of the Atlanta area in Georgia, uh, won a state title there. Uh, Glover was a freshman on that state title team. So, uh, or excuse me, was, was a sophomore on that state title team. So, like, Ohio State knows these guys. They know the coaching staff. They 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 know the kids, and and you better believe Justin Fry. You know probably knows some of the heat that's going on about him right now. That's a guy that you can go down to Alabama with the Ohio State brass and be like, hey, might be time to to think about something else. Might be time to think about Ohio State. You know, so the the ramifications of Nick Saban retiring, we could we could make make it its own show like we probably could continue this conversation un until one of us passes out probably me because i like to ramble a little bit as we all know um but ohio state is doing things on the recruiting trail without nick saban uh really a, a an important character to what they're doing if that makes any sense so so let's talk about that and do you want to talk about devin sanchez first or do you want to talk about zahir mathis first Take your point. Uh, Devin Sanchez. Okay. Um, that's good, actually, because then we could talk about, we could talk a little bit about the All American Bowl and how four plays, I think it was four plays, four or five plays into the All American Bowl, Jeremiah Smith scored a touchdown. And I was just sitting on my couch laughing. I was just like, man, 
this is ridiculous. But we have to we have to go to halftime of the of the All American Bowl to talk about what we're talking about here, which is Devin Sanchez, five star cornerback from Houston, Texas, plays at North Shore High School, uh, who by all counts is a Buckeye. He he announced his commitment on January sixth at halftime of the All American Bowl with a very awesome T shirt. By the way, there are some Ohio State cornerback greats on there. Um, which included his future position coach, Tim Walton. I didn't notice that until I looked closely at the shirt the other night. And I was just like, is that? And it is. Tim Walton was on his shirt, which I was like, that's pretty cool. Um, I don't think that shirt is for sale, however. I think that's a one of one Ohio State fans. So uh, if I'm wrong, uh, Mrs. D. Sanchez will let me know because she's awesome on Twitter. That is Devin's mom. She is awesome. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it was a decision that was expected, but that doesn't take away, uh, the value of the decision, obviously. And to say otherwise would be ignorant. Um, this is a guy that has immediate, I mean, first of all, this is a guy that like commits in January, fully expect him to sign in December and anymore. That's a big deal. Uh, just because how recruiting works, you know, it, it, anything can happen, but that's a kid like I fully expect to sign his letter of intent. He's going to be an early enrollee. And then come January at the, at this time next year, Devin Sanchez is going to be, you know, taking English lit 10 hundred or whatever. I don't know. I didn't go to Ohio state, so I don't know what the classes are called, but uh, six two, like one seventy five. Uh, and, and again, we've talked about this with, with Devin Sanchez. That's the exact type of guy that Jim Knowles and Tim Walton want playing cornerback at Ohio State in this 4-2-5 system. Uh, Spence, for you, when you look at a guy like Devin Sanchez, and because you cover the team, so you have to keep your eye out on recruiting and look at, okay, what are these guys going to be able to do when, you know, when I stop covering them and when you start covering them, right? That's something I think we do pretty well over here. When you see the frame, and, and and everything like that, 6'2", 175. What do you think the potential is for him at Ohio State? With how good he already is, like, what do you see? I mean, flip on the tape at uh, South Grand Prairie from <laughs> some, from Jeff Okuda. He was 6'1 and a half, 180, 6'1 and a half, 185. You know, kind of in that six two, six one, six two mold, kind of in that uh, Tim Walton, old Kerry Combs, first stint Kerry Combs mold of like how Ohio State corner should look. And he's from Texas. It's an easy, lazy comparison, but flip on the tape and you will see that it is a pretty apt comparison. Devin's kind of an in your face corner. He's not afraid to be really physical, he's not afraid to attack the ball, but he's got really good instincts to make sure that he gets to where. He needs to be and is good in coverage. Uh, he gave up zero catches in 15 games as a junior in the state of Texas at the highest level. I don't think that that can be discounted. Um, and you say, does that translate? I don't know. You tell me. Like, you know, I've seen five star guys that are incredible not translate. So, like, you never know really what they're going to do when they get on campus. But, like, you want a comparison, I'll give you one. And it's, I think it, it's very easy and borderline lazy for the Jeff Okuda comparison, but it's only easy because they look the same on film when you look at them from, I know 2017 to 2025 is kind of crazy, like, uh, but that's what it is. And so you want to continue this trend upward on defense. That's the kind of guy that you get. And uh, he's got a chance to help put together a 2017 like recruiting class, just like Jeff Okuda did. So I'm, I think the sky's the limit for this kid at Ohio state. I, I think as long as Tim Walton is coaching corners, he yeah. he's got a chance to be the best of this long run. Now that we're getting ready to see of corners, I think he, I, I college wise, I think he kind of reminds me of Denzel Ward. But like you talk about like coming straight out of high school, he reminds me of what Jeff Okuda looked like down in Texas. And that's that's a that's the third five star in the third recruiting cycle. Jermaine Matthews got his fifth star. Uh, in the final um, rankings update in 2023, Aaron Scott was a, is a five star in 2024, and now you have Devin Sanchez, a five star cornerback in 2025. 
And Ohio State, like, they're not done at corner. Um, Dorian Brew commits uh, in two weeks, less than two weeks. Um, and I've already – I've had a prediction on Ohio State to land him since June. And as a matter of fact, I actually increased my percentage in that. I went from 65 to 75. So, like, I feel very good that Ohio State's going to get Dorian Brew, six foot one, 200 pounds, another long physical corner. Uh, we've mentioned Naheem Offord. Uh, quite frankly, Ohio State's going to have to start telling kids no because they, they, got, they got too many guys. Um, well, one of the things that I think they're going to do, well, Matt, is they, they've got a little bit of leverage, right? I really think that unlike many times before, and this is a, a classic Heartline move, you want in the class, get in, because uh, we're not waiting on you. Yep. And, you know, look at the – I know he just transferred, but look at Noah Rogers. You know, do you want in my class? If not, we're going to go get a guy like Rico Flores um, from the, that ended up at Notre Dame. And it's now like – UCLA. Yeah, yeah but, but, you know, when you are recruiting at that level, you have the ability to tell – top 40 top 50 level kids hey if you don't want in we're going to get this guy so yeah. hey dorian if you want to drag this thing out we're going to go grab naeem offered from the deep south and see if we still have room later down the road for you like it's one of these things where like you start getting on a roll and you can start telling some really good kids like hey get in or, or stay out because we're not going to have room for you and a lot of folks, uh, I've seen a lot of question marks about Trey McNutt, the four-star athlete from Shaker Heights just outside of Cleveland. Uh, Ohio State's recruiting him as a safety, which that's the right spot for him in my in my opinion. Some places are recruiting uh, Trey McNutt as a cornerback. Like I know Notre Dame sees him as, as a cornerback. Michigan is kind of back and forth on, on, on where it sees Trey McNutt as. Uh, and then you have the question, like, what about a guy like Mark Zachary from Ben Davis in Indianapolis, Indiana, uh, who's a very talented cornerback as well? Um, now that Ohio State is, like, consistently recruiting at this level and can actually land these guys, a guy like Mark Zachary, that's the guy, that's the guy that you have to say, hey, look, like, if, if you want in, the time is now because um, we, don't, we don't have room to wait. And mm -hmm. that's, I think that should be encouraging for Ohio State fans. Um, and speaking on, on Trey McNutt really quickly, by the way, uh, and I put this on the Letterman Row message board, uh, McIrary being from Willoughby Hills, which is outside of the Cleveland area, and that that's a good thing. That's pretty interesting, if if you ask me. And Trey McNutt is not your typical in-state guy. Like, he... He's actively listening to what uh, Michigan has to say. He's actively listening to places like Tennessee and Georgia and, you know, places not in Ohio. Um, so that is something that's a big thing for, for Matt Guerrero. Uh, I am yet to hear a comment from Fahim Delane about Ohio State's new safeties coach, but it was a pretty big blow to the Buckeyes recruiting efforts of Fahim Delane, the four-star safety from Good Counsel in uh, Maryland, um, who has long been the top priority at the safety position for Ohio State. So you'd have to expect the first two phone calls Matt Guerrero you're gonna is going to make is to Fahim Delane and then Trey McNutt. Mm -hmm. Maybe not in that order, maybe in that order. I don't know. That was That's the big question mark about Matt Guerrero is can he recruit Ohio State level players to go to Ohio State? Uh, I look forward to to covering that. I certainly do. Um, I think the dead period ends either today or tomorrow. I think it was today, actually. Uh, and then it starts back up in February. But uh, can't waste any time on, on those two guys. So that's I think that's enough defensive back talk unless you have anything else you wanted to throw in there. Uh, I think we'll do a full show on what all the coaching moves uh, mean for recruiting when, yeah. when they do good. happen um because yeah. i don't think the buckeyes are done obviously there's a hole right now on the on the staff um with the departure of parker fleming as special teams coordinator um but i i do think you'll see tim walton help out matt Guerrero, um to start uh, because tim walton's just so good at this he he really is uh let's talk to hear mathis before we get out of here we've already been here for 40 minutes <laughs> it's kind of crazy 
the way the time no. Yeah. Uh, let's talk to here, Mathis. I think this kid has um, – hmm. let's use a grandma word. I think he's got oodles of potential to uh, – Matt, he's, he's got a lot of potential um, as a top 100, a guy who uh, is going to keep adding weight, a guy who's going to keep getting uh, faster and stronger as he gets older. Um, Larry got a good one. And, man, Larry, you know, we, we used to say uh, in the biz, stud going to stud when they, Ohio State would miss out on a guy. Sometimes you can say that about Larry when when Larry Johnson um, and the Buckeyes you know miss out on an off on a defensive lineman, but sometimes Larry going to Larry is still uh, the still gold hit. state. It still hits, man, and yeah. when it hits, you better be happy because uh, this is a this is a kid who wants to shut it down, isn't really all that interested in hearing the pitch from anyone else anymore, and uh, the Buckeyes got them a good one. Yeah. Uh... I think he's the number five edge in the country by on three, number 68 overall prospect, uh, number one Pennsylvania prospect. That's that's a good that's a good get for Ohio mm-hmm. State, especially when uh, they are recruiting someone that's in the Penn State Penn State wheelhouse. Penn State wasn't even a finalist for this guy, so another L for James Franklin, I suppose. Uh, anyway, I'm not here to, to crap on James Franklin. I will do that at another time. Don't worry. Uh, yes. Is he here? Mathis <clears throat> closer. He, he's listed at six, five, uh, 230 pounds, but talking with folks, he's actually closer to six, six, which is nuts. Um, and he's more like two twenty five. So got it. Got to eat. Got to eat. Uh, and everybody eats as we know, everybody eats. But the things that he does well are the things that you want to hear a defensive end does well. I mean, he's twitchy. He he has great recognition, uh, great play recognition. Um, There are some, I don't want to say concerns, but like talking with some folks, uh, talking with the on three scouting uh, evaluators and the rankings fellas, particularly Cody Belair, who's really become my right-hand man here as I – look for evaluations from guys um the the big thing is the bend it's just because zahir mathis is so tall uh he's he's only like 16 17 years old so he's learning how to play within his frame uh mm-hmm. like he's learning how to do that and that's the biggest thing right now is the bend he has the twitch and he has the explosion off the line of scrimmage it's just the bend uh and that is something that i mean when we get to watch Ohio State practice in August during training camp, how many the the for the twenty minutes we get to watch, uh, we watch defensive line. How many how many times are they running the ring? How many times are they running around the hoop to work on the bend? That's all we ever see. I feel um, so that that is something that no matter if if Zahir Mathis ends up signing with Ohio State, which all signs are pointing that he will because, you know, he told me that he's not really interested in the recruiting game. He just wanted to commit, be done with it, which is, that's great for Ohio state. How refreshing. Yeah. It's very nice. The The fact that back-to-back commitments for Ohio state have been from kids that have no interest in being recruited anymore, except by Ohio state. Ryan day and company are cooking right now in, in all aspects, I would say, uh, the biggest thing, like I mentioned, is the bend, but that is something that you can coach. Uh, and the bend is really going to have to be worked on when Mathis puts on 40 pounds uh, to get to a weight where you can play defensive end at Ohio State. Um, some other names, though, that I wanted to talk about, and I'm going to get in more depth about this at LoudermanRoad.com, either later today or maybe for Friday. I don't know. Uh, it's so hard to try to plan out content when you're still waiting on guys to, you know, make an announcement or something like that. Um, yesterday, the number one edge in the 2025 cycle, Ari Watford from Virginia, from the Virginia beach area, uh, released his top six, Ohio state is a finalist in that. Some of the other schools in there, uh, are Syracuse, Virginia tech, South Carolina, Penn state. Um, just looking at what Ohio state does, uh, I'm not saying I like Ohio State to win that recruitment, but you look at what Ohio State does, and I think the Buckeyes will make that interesting. Then you had Christopher Burgess, who just committed to Notre Dame the same day that Devin Sanchez committed to Ohio State. Uh, 
I have said that I feel like that'll be a recruitment that continues to happen. Um, just speaking with some folks, it, it seems like Burgess was was really, really torn on Ohio State and Notre Dame. And, you know, when a kid is that torn and still makes a decision, that just that just tells me that it's not over. So if Ohio State can get Burgess on campus and March or April, or even for an official visit in the summer, I think that would be good. I, I think that that would be a, a, a good sign for things to come. Uh, we've already talked about JV and Hilson, uh, Justin Hill from four star edge rusher from Cincinnati, Ohio, plays at Winton Woods, which is again a program that Ohio State knows very, very well with Mayan Williams and Jermaine Matthews coming from uh, the Southwestern Ohio powerhouse. Uh, I think it has kind of, we've talked about Justin Hill a couple of times where he, he has such positional versatility that it's almost becoming a, you know what, the entire Ohio State staff is recruiting him. Like Ryan Day is involved in that recruitment. Larry Johnson is involved in that recruitment. Jim Knowles is James Laurinaitis and Keenan Bailey because Keenan Bailey recruits Cincinnati. So that's five guys on Ohio State staff not to mention, you know, Mark Pantone and Nick Murphy and Aaron Dunstan. And I bet you Sam McGrath is probably involved in that recruitment somehow, some way. Uh, that's a lot of people recruiting Justin Hill, who also was very, very high on Alabama because of Nick Saban. So there you go. Uh, I do like the Buckeyes to land Justin Hill. And I do think, should he go to Ohio State, I do think he will end up as an edge rusher. Uh, he's already 6'4", about 230, 235. That's too big to play linebacker when you're that size at 17 years old. Um, another guy that I really like is Nathaniel Marshall from Chicago. Uh, he's about 6'4", six 6'5", foot six foot edge that Ohio State offered in October or November of 2023. Um, you talk about a guy that can bend. It's that guy. He's a really good athlete, really good basketball player as well. Uh, that's going to be, I, I think that's going to be another uh, perennial Midwest powerhouse programs with like Ohio State and Michigan and Notre Dame. Um, I don't consider Penn State a Midwestern program, but I'll throw him in there just because. Uh, and then London Merritt from Atlanta, Georgia, who I just think transferred to IMG, which you don't really like to see that if you're Ohio State, because IMG doesn't really care for Ohio State for whatever reason. Uh, unless your name is Carnell Tate, um, but that is neither here nor there. And one guy that this is this is kind of how I want to end this, and then we can go into maybe something else or be done, whichever you decide. But this is this is a big gripe that I have, okay? Because I, I push in-state recruiting. If there are guys in Ohio that could be successful at Ohio State, I think Ohio State needs to recruit them. Uh, the name that comes to mind is Cedric Works, the four-star edge rusher from Clayton Northmont High School, uh, who just announced a Georgia offer Wednesday night, does not have an Ohio State offer. So if if Georgia thinks this kid is good enough, why doesn't Ohio State? Uh, Cedric, Cedric Works used to be teammates with Dorian Brew before Dorian Brew moved to Texas. Uh, which Dorian Brew also got a Georgia offer this morning. I don't really see that impacting Ohio State's position in that recruitment, by the way. Um, but yeah, Cedric Works. I think that's a guy where, I mean, you don't, I think this is a guy who's ultimately, if he wants the offer, if he wants the Ohio State offer, I think it's going to be, he has to earn it and he's going to have to camp. And at that point he could be committed to Georgia, you know? So it's just like, when there are players in your backyard uh, that are that good and you don't offer, to me, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, because right now, I would say Georgia is ahead of Ohio State defensively and, and what they do and how and how they go about it. You know, I, I don't think that's pants on head crazy to say, you know, uh, but I, I just don't I don't get it. So and I don't have to get it. You know, I, I'm not Larry Johnson. I don't evaluate the kids. Uh, I try to advocate sometimes. Sometimes I try to do that. But a guy like Cedric Works, who's six foot five, 235 pounds, and plays in a very competitive conference uh, in, in Dayton. I mean, he plays in the same conference that Springfield and Centerville and all of like uh, Huber Heights Wayne, all of those schools, they all play against each other. Springfield is 
three time division one state championship appearances, you know? So Cedric works getting a Georgia offer, but not having an Ohio state offer is very interesting to me because I think that's a kid that if you offer, it's an automatic commit. Maybe that's why the offer hasn't happened yet, but that's a kid who I think gets an Ohio state offer commits to Ohio state and actually does really good things for the Buckeyes. So I would expect, I don't want to say expect, but I would start following that recruitment if you're an Ohio State fan um, because it's one to follow. Whether Ohio State offers or not, Cedric Works is going to be a really good college football player. So that's that's my endorsement. Um, and that kind of wraps it up at, at defensive end right now for Ohio State. They're going to have to go out and get five or six guys. They've already got one with Zaheer Mathis. That's a great addition, and, and it's a good start for Larry Johnson in 2025. It certainly is. The Buckeyes on the recruiting trail are starting to heat up. They're heating up in the NIL game. They're heating up uh, bringing guys back for a run in 2024, which would mean good things on the recruiting trail in 2025. Good piece of news on the recruiting trail in 2025. Uh, the, the king of recruiting all time is now gone, so... You don't have to recruit against Nick Saban anymore. Always good news for the Buckeyes. Good news for everybody else in college football. Um, but I'm sure the next guy at Alabama will have big shoes to fill, but we'll be really good at that job as well because they're not going to hire somebody who stinks out loud. So that's where we put a pin in this. Uh, the Buckeyes, again, starting to cook a little bit. Matt Parker covers it all at LettermanRow.com. Go get that coverage. $1 for your first month. If my eyes seemed a little wandering today, it's because news has been happening literally at all times. Yeah, at all times. So what, what happened while we were live? Just for uh, Marvin of- Harrison Jr. declared for the NFL draft, which I don't know if you've heard of him, but he's going to be a first round pick. Um, and in a draft where we thought there could be five or six first round Ohio State picks, they're all returning to school except for Marvin Harrison Jr. So uh, he might be the only one, but he's going to be a big one. Um, he's off to the draft. I had to go away for a second. That's why Matt was in the full screen. Uh, just a little inside baseball. But that's how we do things here. Things are happening live as we're going live. LettermanRow.com, the Letterman Lounge message board, is the place to be to keep up on all of that. Again, go get that that access, $1 for your first month, to get Matt Parker's coverage of recruiting alongside Alex Gleitman. Get the 40-year vet, Tim May, Andy Baxter, and I on the team side. The whole On3 network will be at your fingertips. $1 for your first month of that. Come see us at LettermanRow.com. Give us a chance. I promise you won't regret it. We'll see you in that Letterman Lounge message board for the next For all the conversation, we'll see you back here on the YouTube channel for the next edition of the Letterman Lounge, breaking down Ohio State football recruiting at Letterman Road.